Professional golf returning to Savannah for the seventh playing of the Club Car Championship. The Corn Ferry Tour event bringing some of the brightest rising stars of the game to compete at the Deer Creek course at the Landings Golf and Athletic Club. From behind the scenes to inside the ropes. Once again, WJCL 22 has this year's four day 72 hole tournament covered from all the angles. Good evening and welcome to Inside the Ropes live from the Deer Creek course. I'm Amy Zimmer and do we have a full crew standing by for you today. Our Preston Harvey, Rick Snow and Dave Williams will join us in just a few minutes. Opening round of the Club Car Championship got underway bright and early this morning, a little after seven and golfers are just now wrapping up their first round as I speak. And with the weather, I mean, Mother Nature really is not giving these Corn Ferry Tour professionals a break for yesterday's pro-am. We dealt with rain for most of the day and as you can probably tell from home it's pretty gusty here even if you might have stepped outside at some point today the wind has been blowing all day making it very difficult for these golfers to go low here's a look at first round highlights no time to sleep in the guys with early tea times waking up and going low quick. The doc was in early former Clemson standout doc Redmond with a beautiful second shot at the par four first. He leaves it nice and close leads the birdie one under 71 for Redmond Thursday. Alvaro Ortiz coming out hot after a birdie at one. He's eyeing another one at the par five third. Ortiz gets the putt to drop one under 71 for him as well. Kyle Westmoreland had a share of the early lead after sinking this birdie putt at the par five six. However, a couple bogeys and a double leaves him at par. Kevin Stadler with a two under 70 to open the tournament. He's got the nice chip at number three leads to the birdie there for Stadler, who's in the thick of it after the first round at two under. Staying there at number three, Ryan Gerard now from off the green. And how about the run up the hill? Gerard's third shot. Ends up a couple feet from the cup. He would make birdie and card a three under 69 in the first round. He's one of several morning guys to get to minus three. Danny Walker was another. He starts his round with a beautiful approach at the par four first. Leads to this birdie. Sits at three under as well. Wind picking up in the afternoon wave. Former Georgia Southern standout Stephen Fisk still able to make a climb up the leaderboard. Would share the lead at one point. He would finish his opening round at two under. The man pulling away, Marcelo Rosso. A whopping five birdies on the back nine as he finishes strong with the long putt for par. And here's a look at the first round leaderboard for you. How about two? First right now with Marcella Rosso and Chris Pete Fish. Meanwhile, closer to home, three former Georgia Southern standouts in the field. Stephen Fisk currently tied for 12th at two under. Mason Williams tied for 48th and Ben Carr tied for 50th. Both were a part of the afternoon wave and are still actually on this course. Plus, of course, former Clemson standout and Hilton head Christian grad Bryson Nimmer. He is tied for 49th. Going to bring in our sports reporter Preston Harvey. Now in Preston, you were able to catch up with some of the pros after they turned in their scorecards. What was the overall mood after the opening round? So many of the golfers really pleased with their opening round. And as you can tell, they're pleased with the weather today, much more than yesterday with that rain they was experiencing. But that wind is starting to come out as through, throughout the day. But former Georgia Southern golfers, as you mentioned, you have Mason Williams still on the course. You have Ben Carr still on the course. And Stephen Fisk wrapped up his first round shooting two under. Pretty impressive round. So we were able to catch up with the leader as well as many other golfers on the course about the weather conditions today as well with the wind. Yeah, no doubt. I stroke it uh, from tee to green uh, really well. I putted amazing, uh, even though I four putted eight by 17 hole. But I'm super happy. Uh, I'm really trying to focus on the process uh, day by day, not looking at the results. Uh, I haven't started well this year, but I really uh, kept um, working hard. It definitely is difficult. It's very swirly, especially back in the trees, and it's blowing, I think, like 20 to 30. So definitely making it for a very difficult day. Yeah, I mean, this, this course, when it blows like this, has some teeth. It's very high-level putting. The greens are very fast, so you start playing wind on putts. And certainly, um, you know, just controlling your golf ball in the wind is, is very difficult to do. So this is about as tough as the course will play. And and as you heard them saying right there, that win, very tough to play. But we have a two-way tie for a first right now with Marcel Rosso and Chris Beatfish. So we're in for a pretty good weekend of golf as well. 
Yeah, most definitely. This is just round one, so action just getting underway. We got a long weekend ahead, of course, finding out who makes that cut as well. Okay, we are just warming up here on Inside the Ropes. Still to come, we are going to show you the big announcement the Club Car Championship made earlier today. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Inside the Ropes. Joining me now is our own Rick Snow. And Rick, it's no secret that this tournament has become a fan favorite for not only the spectators, but also the golfers as well. And earlier this morning, the Club Car Championship made a pretty big announcement. Yes, they did. And it's been growing year by year. It was a proud moment as they announced uh, Club Car that they would be the title sponsor for four more years through the tournament of 2029. The growth of the tournament at the Landings Club is reflected in the announcement made by the Club Car CEO, Mark Wagner. I think we realized that really early on that, wow, we could, we could be in this event, be in the Low Country for years and years to come. So it's just great seeing that all come to fruition. Corn Ferry Tour President Alex Baldwin says the growth in Savannah is just part of what is happening on the entire tour. I'm so proud and I'm so grateful of all the amazing people that have contributed to the success of this event. And um, they've really demonstrated what's possible and, and very reflective of the energy, the momentum, the excitement around the Corn Ferry Tour, um, the community, the volunteers, um, the folks at the Landings Golf and Athletic Club, just an amazing outpouring of support. And emotional tournament director Cheyenne Overby is proud of the success of the tournament, especially with the Golf Channel now being involved. 
the, the two questions I was asked the most when I took over was when are we going to be on Golf Channel and who's going to be our title sponsor and so standing here today with both of those things accomplished certainly feel like some of those major milestones that we've been striving for for years. Uh, tournament director Cheyenne Overby should be relief but it was more like dig in and work harder. Yeah, well, seventh year now that she has been leading the yes. way since its inception as tournament director. So excited to see that more is still going to come along here with the Corn Ferry Tour continuing yep. to make a stop here in Savannah. A lot of success is due to her, her hard work. That is correct. Yep. yep. Well, and the Corn Ferry Tour and the Club Card Championship always teaming up to make sure that this event is much more than just golf. As our Lydia Blackstone shows us, this tournament giving a special salute to the military. You can see the flags flying, signifying each branch of our armed service here on the 14th hole of the Club Car Championship. The outpost behind me being filled with veterans who share a love for golf and a love for country. Knowing that all of these folks here have done that and played a part in what a wonderful country that we have, and it's like it's just so nice. The Club Car's military outpost welcomes the heroes of our U.S. military, one of them being Jim Heater, a Hunter Army Airfield retired pilot. It gave me direction, um, allowed me to um, see the world um, that also allowed me to be able to learn how to fly helicopters. Heater says the club car championship is just one of the things he loves about Savannah. And we've been here 29 years since, so it's just a wonderful location. We love um, the opportunities, we love our church, we love the school system. Military appreciation being a core part of the tournament. The military is part of our community. Uh, when I think when the tournament first started, there were more than 30,000 people here who were military, families of military, and that's a, that's a big number in a community with about 250,000 people. All military and their family get in free, looking to a big day on Saturday. A special day with uh, Savannah Logistics Group and Marines and our Military Appreciation Day ceremony and the final day on Sunday. That hole on hole 14 is probably where competition really starts to get decided on Sunday. But Heater says he really just enjoys sharing the outpost with his brothers in service. There's nothing better than to, to talk about the stories and the experiences and the, the fellowship that you have as being a military member. And the main Military Appreciation Day is on Saturday. However, any military family or veteran can get in free throughout the entire tournament. On the 14th hole of the Club Car Championship, Lydia Blackstone, WJCL 22 News. All right, thanks so much, Lydia. And joining me now is our Dave Williams. And Dave, always when the Corn Ferry mm -hmm. Tour rolls through, we see a lot of former collegiate golfers that have played close to home. And one university that is well represented this year is Georgia Southern. Absolutely. Eagles flying high, so to speak. Uh, three former Georgia Southern Eagles in this field this year, Amy. Of course, Ben Carr is getting a sponsor's exemption. He plays on the PGA Tour Americas, but he's in this tournament. Mason Williams, who just graduated in 2023, also in this field, he qualified Monday to earn his shot into this tournament, and he was out on the course. He and both uh, Ben Carr still on the course. Stephen Fisk finished up earlier today at two under par, and we were able before the round to catch up with Ben Carr, what it means for him to be playing in this tournament. And then afterwards, we caught up with Stephen Fisk and he talked about his round. It's pretty special. Got some family and friends coming out to watch today. So always nice to play in front of some familiar faces. Um, I've played this golf course a few times in college, so definitely comfortable out here. But um, playing on sponsors exemption, you're kind of playing with house money. so. Hopefully get to go out there and free it up a little bit and um, keep keep going on this tour and not have to go back down to South America. It's nice to be back in the States and even nicer to be close to home. Um, certainly feels a little bit like a home game. Um, you know, having spent five or six years in Statesboro, it's, it's nice to come back down. I feel like the back plays a little harder than the front and, you know, I was able to roll in a few longer putts on the front side uh, and just kind of didn't keep that going, but that's not something you can kind of expect to keep doing. Well, you know, you could tell by that sound with both Steven and Ben how much it means to be able to play here. Ben has played his course a couple of times uh, throughout his career with the Eagles, so uh, they were going to have some 
fans here and who knows what what that will do we'll we'll, we'll see how 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 they progress and keep following them throughout the rest of the tournament yeah of course expecting a big following for those former georgia southern eagles and other universities here that are well represented as well from the peach state of course the georgia bulldogs have a couple players right. in the mix and georgia tech as well okay still to come here on inside the ropes you're not gonna want to want you're not gonna want to miss this one it is our shot of the day that and more straight ahead All right, taking you straight out to our shot of the day. How about former Georgia Southern standout Ben Carr getting his round off to a hot star? Hole one sinks the birdie putt. Yeah, not a bad way to kick off things here at the Club Car Championship. Okay, now we're going to check in with our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Nelson. And Jeremy, it was windy today. Can we expect those same conditions tomorrow? I would say breezy, not as windy for tomorrow. So a little better news. Winds about 10 to 20 miles per hour. The high is 67 if you're out there early any of these next several rounds please have an extra layer of light jacket by afternoon it will feel comfortable back to you all right thanks jeremy for that second round forecast that's going to do it for inside the ropes thanks so much for joining us and have a great night